As per question number six, a uniform T-shaped object made of two thin rods of same material with dimensions as shown in the figure lies on a smooth horizontal table. A force F is applied to point P on the object such that it moves only translationally. The distance of point P from point C is. Dear students, it is given that the object moves only translationally, which means that the torque on this body about the center of mass should be zero. And when the torque on the body about the center of mass is zero, it means that the force which is acting on the body must pass through the center of mass itself. Therefore, dear students, P is the location of the center of mass of the system and that is the whole problem statement that we have to find out the center of mass's position. Dear students, let the mass of the horizontal rod be m, then the mass of the lower vertical rod will be m as well. We can write down the location of center of mass from point C as m into 0 for the horizontal rod plus m into L by 2 for the vertical downward rod divided by m plus m and this will be equal to L by 4 which makes option number 1 as the correct answer. Now let us solve the question number 7. The question number 7 says for an isochoric process related to an idle gas which of the following graph is correct? T is the absolute temperature, V is volume and P is pressure. Dear students, isochoric process means that volume is constant. Now dear students, from the idle gas equation that PV is equal to nRT, this means that P is proportional to T and hence the graph between pressure and temperature is a straight line passing through the origin which means that the option number 2 is the correct answer. Dear students, now let us proceed to the next question of the test which is question number 8. Question 8 says, a uniformly charged liquid drop of radius 10 cm and charge 1 coulomb is broken down into 1000 identical small drops. These smaller drops are placed on the periphery of a circle of radius 10 meters. The net electric potential in joules per coulomb at the center of the circle is. Dear students, when a bigger drop of charge 1 coulomb is split into multiple drops, then each drop will have a charge equal to 1 by 1000 coulombs. When all these drops are placed on the periphery of a circle, the distance of every drop from the center of the circle would be equal. Dear students, the potential due to any drop can be written as kq by r which will be equal to k into 1 by 1000 coulomb divided by the radius of the circle which is 10. This will be equal to k into 10 to the power minus 4. Now dear students, for 1000 drops, we have to multiply this individual potential by 1000 and this will be equal to the net potential. So this will be equal to k into 10 raised to power minus 1 or 9 into 10 raised to power 8. It means that the option number 2 for this question is the correct answer. Dear students, now let us proceed to the question number 9. As per question number 9, in a horizontal tube, the area of cross section A varies with distance x from one end as shown in the figure. If an ideal flue flows in the tube, then the variation of pressure P with distance x is best represented by. Dear students, Bernoulli's theorem states that pressure plus half rho v square is equal to constant. This is specifically for a horizontal tube where there is no height variations. Dear students, also from the equation of continuity, the product of area and velocity will be constant. From this graph, we can write down that A has a variation with x as A is equal to mx plus c, where m is the slope and c is the intercept, which means that if v is equal to constant by A, it will be equal to some constant divided by mx plus c. Dear students, on substituting the value of V from this expression in the Bernoulli's theorem, we can write down that P plus half rho, let the constant be K by mx plus c square is another constant, let this be small a. From this expression, we can write down that P has a variation with x as P is equal to A minus B by mx 
plus c square please note that we have combined all the constants into two constant that is a and b dear students from this expression we can see that if x increases p increases as well also the variation is not linear from this information only we can plot and decide that which among the following options should be the correct answer and for of course option number one for this question is the correct answer now let us proceed to the question number 10 question 10 says current i in an inductor varies as simple harmonic function of time t as shown in the figure the variation of induced voltage as a function of time is best represented by the students the induced voltage can be written as minus l di by dt herein i has a function of cos some constant t where t is the time so we have to differentiate this with respect to time and this will be equal to dear students l into a sin a t and therefore the induced voltage will have a sinusoidal graph which means option number one is the correct answer now let us solve the question number 11 